Enda, how are you? Um, I suppose it's been, there's been a, I suppose, a long time coming. Um, the last time there was supposed to be an international uh, break, there was the, it was the playoff, and then obviously, you know, what happened with COVID happened. Um, you've, you've obviously had the, the, the season to play out since, uh, since all of that back over in England now. But how are you, how are you settling in now with the, with the squad ready for another international break? Yeah, it's been good. Obviously, as you said, it's been a long time coming. So. I think everybody's come in with a spring in their step and just ready, ready to go and uh, look forward to the two games that are coming up. And what's what's the what's the sort of what's the bubble been like? What's the sort of the the initial, uh, I suppose, meeting with new management as well? Yeah, we, we were just we had a meeting. We were introduced to all the new management team and all the new staff, and um, a few things have changed around the hotel, obviously because of the COVID ruling and. Be fair to them; they've done a really good job, and uh, they made it as easy as possible for us to kind of settle in. So it's all been good. You probably more so than an awful lot of other people in the squad would know Steve Kenny quite a little bit more from from your time at at, at Shamrock Rovers. He'd have been, yeah, you know, around the league as well. What kind of what kind of manager is he, and what what are you kind of expecting from him um, as as Ireland manager? Yeah, he's just a, a manager that kind of wears his heart and his sleeve. You can see the passion that he has. Um, and the, the, the dedication he puts into to how he wants us to play and and how he wants to like really do well. There's a big opportunity there for us, you know. Um, with the games coming up and there's a lot of international football to be played over the next season or so. So um, he's just really passionate about it and really cares and he, he's desperate to do well. Um, I mentioned obviously that the last time the Ireland squad had an opportunity, or well we're supposed to have an opportunity to assemble was that playoff. There's now going to be uh, what the, the, the two games in the Nations League before we even get there. Is that, is that somewhat satisfying for you that there'll be that little bit of run time into that to try and qualify for the Euros? Yeah, definitely. I think it will help us. I think obviously the Nations League are competitive friendlies now and we have, there's a big opportunity for us um, to get into a playoff final. So, it, And then after these two games now, it's a it's a good build up now to the to the playoff that's gonna come next month. So I think it will only suit us. Um it will help us and, and hopefully we can kinda of settle down quickly. Well what would it mean to you to I suppose to qualify for that given given everything? Yeah, it'd be huge. It's, it's what you want to do. You wanna play in a major tournament for your country. It's it's probably the pinnacle of your career representing your country. So um it's it's a quick turnaround obviously with the Euros being delayed. So if you could qualify for the Euros and then you got the the World Cup around the corner, it, it could be a really successful couple of years. I noticed as well you've been uh, you've been back um, sort of around the sort of the Shamrock Rovers set up. I know you were you were doing things with, with with some of the academy teams there. Have you been training at all with with the with the Rovers squad, the senior squad, or what's the story there? No, no, I just um, I popped up to just uh, show me face to a few of the underage teams up at Rollstone, so. It was just a case of showing me face and, and just having a chat with the kids and, and giving them a bit of advice and that. And um, I wouldn't be wouldn't be anywhere around the the Rovers first team. I would have been doing me training on my own. Yeah, and and then I suppose as well the the, the big announcement from a Rovers perspective earlier on was that they've drawn AC Milan um, in the in the next qualifying round of the Europa League. That's a huge tie, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. It's brilliant, brilliant to see, and um, it'll be hopefully I'll be able to watch it. Um, I'm not sure when the fixture is, but uh, hopefully there'll be some way of me being able to watch it if I'm in Ireland or if I'm in England, in England at the time. So uh, it's a massive game for them. It's a bit disappointing that the fans won't be there, but um, still a huge toy. Okay, thanks very much, Enda. No problem. Hi, Enda. Guy from Sky. Um, just talking about what you said uh, about Stephen Kenny, um, is it a change in mindset that he's looking to implement with the squad that he's got? Um, I think he just wants to instill confidence in us to uh, to play and go out on the front foot and play. Like um, With the previous manager, Mickey, he tried to do that and um, it kind of worked for a bit and we, we played some games. We played well, we picked up a performance and it's just we didn't really get the results and I think the new manager now will, will come in with his own ideas and he still wants to play that kind of positive football, you know, front foot football attacking, and and we need to just rectify his ideas on the pitch. I mean, you play with a very front foot football with Sheffield United and Chris Wilder in recent years. Obviously, that will suit you. I mean, it, it sounds great, doesn't it? Play on the front foot, be aggressive. How, how difficult is it to actually implement? 
Um, it is it, it is difficult, but you, I think the players, it's more sort of the players just need to buy into it and just listen to what he has to say. And we've done a training session today. We were doing a lot of work on, on what we were doing. So um, we're learning. Um, and hopefully from Thursday um, we can we can do it on the pitch. Do you feel you have the players to be able to play that style? Yeah, definitely. I think I think a lot of players will probably play it in the in their club level, so uh, it, it won't be second nature to them. Um, by training today, it was all positive. Everyone was training well, and it was uh, really competitive. So it's looking good. Because Stephen Kenny has said, he was quoted as saying he wanted to change the way Irish football was viewed worldwide. What do you think he means by that? Um, I think he probably just wants to have an identity. I think he wants to implement his identity on the game, his way of playing, his formation. And he wants the players to like play the way he feels we should be playing and... and uh, and that's what we're going to work on the most is, is probably a way of playing, which we probably didn't have over the last few years. Is it about trying to go out to win games as opposed to not lose them? We've always gone out to win games, but I just think, I think hopefully we'll be better prepared now. And I think it's probably a case of just lads knowing their jobs and, and kind of having that game plan setting up in a, in a way to win a game and hopefully it'll work. Cheers, Ender. Thanks very much. No problem. Tony? Okay, thanks, Carl. Hi, Ender. How are you doing? Yeah, like Tony. I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Um, did you give Matt Doherty a bit of a slagging after his, uh, his big money move to Tottenham? <laughs> no. Uh, no, no, we were all delighted for him. It's, uh, it's a brilliant move for him. Uh, it's well deserved. And, um, he's come a long way from his cabinet days and fall. So uh, I was just delighted for him. Everyone's delighted for him. It's unbelievable. And has he has he talked about getting down there and having his his first day and his photo yeah. taken and all of that? Yeah, uh, I he, I think he's just been loving the attention he's been getting over the last few days. I haven't seen his face off Sky Sports News, so um, <laughs> I think he's still on cloud nine. He just needs to bring his feet back down to earth now in the next few days. Well, that's the thing. I mean, do you think after the whirlwind of joining a new club, he was only on his holidays two days ago? Um, will the first game come true for him, do you think? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think Matt is one of them who will always look after himself. You know, I'm sure he's been away on holidays, but I'm sure he's been working hard and training in the off-season. He'd be ready to, to, to come back fit. Um, he, didn't look, he didn't look sluggish one bit today in training. Like. Yeah, it's interesting because Stephen Kenny was talking about having been at Tottenham and watching them and the way Serge Aurier plays so high up, almost... His starting position is in line with, with Harry Kane. Uh, and he was talking about maybe Matt being able to do something like that. But at the other side of the pitch, does that mean that you'll have to kind of stay back a bit and it, it might, um, I suppose, prevent you from getting forward yourself? Playing against Matt? If, if Matt's on one side and you're on the other and he's high up, will you have to stay back? Um, yeah, I think you kind of work it between... Between the left side and midfielder and myself, who kind of tucks in a bit narrower, but um, it's the way the game kind of it's the way that we, we work things. Um, certain positions on the pitch, if people are in certain positions on the pitch, I might be able to be getting in the box at the back stick, you never know. So, uh, it's just how the game will pan out and how it will work. And obviously, formations of our positions kind of dictate where you'll be. But you, especially at, at Sheffield United, you, you got very far forward this season. But maybe you were spending as much time in the final third, were you? Yeah, it's one team that our manager is big on. He's big on the opposite wing back getting in the box and, and scoring more goals. And it's something that I probably could have done a lot more of. Um, and it's something that I'll obviously work a lot more on this season. And it's something to improve on. But from an Irish point of view as well, do you think actually that Ireland could learn a bit from Sheffield United? Of course, we have quite a few of you in our personnel. Uh, I don't know. It's, I think it's. I think Ireland have to kind of. Well, what we want is our own identity. We want to learn how to play our own way and and have have that kind of personality ourselves as a team. And I think that's what the manager's looking to do now. He's trying to set us up in a way of playing and run for football, attacking, and and he just wants to see us like you know playing with confidence. And finally, for me, I'm going to bring you back to uh, your Shamrock Rovers days and. Yes, they have AC Milan coming up, but 
I think it's 10 years ago that they had Juventus, a Juventus team that had uh, Del Piero, Bonucci, Chiellini, uh, and you were involved that day as well. What was it like? Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was, um, it was a massive occasion for me personally, you know. Um, the event has come to Tala and it was, it, was, it was great that we, um, we got to go it, it, play them at home and then go away and play. We were disappointed we didn't get to play in their stadium. Um, I think because of you two at a concert, so you have to play somewhere else. Um, but it was I cool. remember the rain that night, yeah? Yeah, the, the rain. Um, um, it was some experience and I'm sure like the, the lads now will We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll experience that now in the next few weeks and do something else. But this is an AC Milan team that nearly signed Jeff Hendrick. Yeah, I know. It would have been, it, it would have been strange if Jeff had been making a debut on Halle. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say to the, the Shamrock Rovers guys uh, looking forward to that game on the 17th of September? Yeah, it's, it's a chance for them. It's a chance for them to show them what they can do and... Um, you've got to have that belief that you can go in the game. It's a one-off game, especially at home. and um, It's going to be some experience for them, but they shouldn't phase them. They should go out there and just express themselves. And what would you do if Zlatan was coming up against you? Uh, he wouldn't be coming up against me. He's, he's a striker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, thanks very much, Ender. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, Ender. You all right? Yeah, good thanks, good thanks. Um, just going back to Stephen Kenny, um, there's been a lot of talk about him having much of his experience as a manager at home in Ireland. As a, as a former League of Ireland player, do you think that's disrespectful to him? Um, his, 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 his part in the football is his part. Everyone has a different part in the football. I mean, he's worked his way up now to manage just the, the international team, the senior men's team. And, and that's, as I said, it's the pinnacle of my career playing for my country. I'm sure it's the pinnacle of his career playing for his, uh, or managing his country. So, um, no, I think it's, it's you know, pass is a pass. And he, he's as hungry and determined to do as well as, as I am and every player here. And, and just uh, looking at club level, I mean, how do you reflect on, on the season you've had as a, as a club? And how do you go about trying to replicate that next season? Um, we... We'll obviously look to get better. Obviously, we'll look to strengthen our squad and we need to, there's things that we need to work on. There's some, sometimes uh, certain parts of our season where we were a little, little bit disappointed. We didn't win games or pick up results. So um, we won't be kind of focusing so much on last season. It's more like getting better and, and, and being better uh, this season. And just, just finally, the, the last Nations League campaign was, was tough for Ireland. It wasn't great. How, how keen are you to sort of put that right and have a, a good campaign this time? Yeah, we're all keen. We all want to do well. We all want to succeed um, playing, playing, especially over the next two years, because there's an awful lot to play for. And with the Nations League, it gives you a, a great opportunity to play in a playoff final and, and secure games against top countries uh, if you get promoted to the top league. Brilliant, thank you. Cheers. Nathan. Hey, and how's it going? Um, just on the club side of things, and John Egan in particular, and his progress over the last couple of years at Sheffield United, people now talk about him as maybe the next Ireland captain. Do you see that type of, of leadership figure? And can you talk a bit about how you've got to know him over the last couple of years? Yeah, 100%. I think he's, he's a born leader. He's like he's, um, it just comes natural to him on the pitch. He's... Uh, He's, he's, he's one of the loudest in the change room. He's one of the loudest on the pitch. And he just has, uh, he has the demands. He demands the best of his teammates. And he just has that respect that uh, all the lads had. And he's grown. He's probably grown each year. He's just got better and better and better. And especially when he joined Chef U, he kind of, he fit the, the final piece of the puzzle that we kind of needed to, to kind of be that champ, uh, promotion team. And, and he, he helped us an awful lot, get us over the line. A lot of the talk over the last few months has been about this new style of football and a new era for Irish football. And you talked about it there, about getting on the front foot, about dominating possession. It means there is quite a bit of expectation already, even for this game against Bulgaria. You have two training sessions before the match. Do you feel there's unfair expectation almost that people shouldn't be expecting a revolution in the space of one game on Thursday night? Yeah, I think... I think players are looking at it as an opportunity to impress the new manager. You know, you it's a, it's a clean slate for every player, so we'll all be eager to play to play well, so we can kind of put our name in in, in his head and, and 
you know, get your get get that short and hopefully play well and play as many times as you can for your country. You know, it's a it's a new manager, it's a new staff, and they'll have their own ideas. And but the players will have to play well now to, to stay in the team. And it's, it's, it's just, there's a lot of competition for places. Um, so it's it's just that that healthy competitiveness that you need. It's such a strange scenario in so many ways with the games being behind closed doors, but also that you haven't played club games so far this season and uh, a shorter pre-season than normal. I think I heard Stephen Kenny say at the start of training that everything we do, we do with intensity today. Is it possible to be really intense in these sessions when you are still in pre-season and you are trying to get up to, I guess, an intense level when, when maybe players aren't quite there yet? Um. Yeah, but I think with the training being so intense, it will only help you. You know, you you are probably still building up fitness levels, but with the way the with the way players are and the professionalism in the sport now, like a lot of players would just look after themselves in the off season, that you won't get too you won't go too far out of shape. Um, like we've been back, I don't know how long. I think about maybe a week. We've been back with Chef U, but we played two games in that week. I oh, was back two weeks, so we played two games in that week in that two weeks. So. Uh, our fitness has been building up towards kind of this week, and if if there wasn't internationals now, we'd be probably looking to get ninety minutes in, no matter what this week. So um, it's all building up to it. And obviously, he said about the intensity and training. That's only going to help us kind of get that match sharpness. I know you're going to say you don't rest on your laurels, but you must feel quite comfortable in your position now, not just within the squad, but within the team. That Stephen Kenny names the squad and doesn't really name another out and out left back. He has such belief that you can go and and do that job, provided there's no injury doubts or anything. Do you feel do you feel you can come into this with a, a different type of confidence compared to a, a year, 18 months ago? Um, no, I don't think you should ever be comfortable. Um, footballers should always be kept on the toes, so uh, it's no different here. Like You've got to perform well um, to play, and, and that's what I'll be doing. I'll be keeping my head down and working as hard as I can to, to try and impress the manager. Thanks, Andy. Cheers. Mm. And how are things? Yeah, right. yeah, good. Good, we're good. Um, just going back on a point you made earlier on about Mick, you said like under Mick you tried to play that, play it out from the back and, and play that possession-based game, but you kind of said that, you know, the results suffered, so so you had to kind of alter the way you played. With that in mind, under Stephen, because there's so much expectation, is there a need for people to be patient? Um. I- I don't know. It's 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 fans. It's fans' opinions. Like they have their opinions. They can they can voice their opinions. We just gotta we gotta we gotta play better. We we were disappointed that we didn't beat Denmark um, last last game in the last campaign, and we played very well. And we just it was just a final tour that we really kind of let ourselves down. So that's where we need to improve on, and and that's what I'm sure the manager will be working on. Um, is creating more chances and being more clinical. And, and hopefully we can be, and um, and that will just kind of the results will probably follow with the performances. How tough do you think it will be? You know, you have these two games, as we said there, and then you know the, the biggest game that you possibly have played for Ireland coming up in in just over a month's time when you play that playoff to try and introduce this new system, this new philosophy. Short training session this week, only two days, but also make sure that everybody's total clarity and you're doing doing what's best in in just over a month's time. Yeah, I think the the games will help us a lot because we'll take an awful lot out of the games. We'll learn learn from our mistakes and um, we'll grow as a team. We'll get used to each other. We'll grow. We'll kind of build them partnerships on the pitch with each other and um, and and hopefully we can put in them performances, good performances, win games. And you, you want to get that habit of winning games. Once you have, once you're in the habit of winning games, it kind of all falls into place for you. And just take us into that meeting last night. What's what's Stephen like when he has those those team meetings? Is is it an awful lot of information? You know, obviously apart from the way he wants to play football, at, like as a guy, what's he like around the place? Yeah, he's brilliant. You can just see you can just see his passion in the meetings, and always he, he's really really wants us to do well, and he wants us to go and express ourselves, and he's, he's wanting us to kind of like just show what we can do when we get out on the pitch, and yeah, he's, he's setting us up in a certain way that. We have to listen. We have to take in a lot into account and and produce it on the training pitch first and foremost, and then and then take that onto the pitch now on Thursday. Finally, for me, is this also a week where you can 
in some ways, and I know not in every way, kind of replicate what you're going to have to do in that, in that big playoff in terms of it's a game that's behind closed doors, you're traveling as a group, uh, and to go through those processes to, to, to be ready for that? Yeah, it, it'll, be, it'll, be good, it'll be a good experience for us because we can kind of get, get used to the, the, new, the new normal, as I call it. Um, we can kind of learn, get settled down. I think we travel tomorrow so we can get settled in there and have the training the training session on the pitch before the game and I think a lot of us are now used to the, the obviously the behind closed doors so that won't really affect us uh, now because we, we've been accustomed to it so um, yeah it's all it's all kind of fitting into place now and it's, it's something that we're looking forward to Great stuff thanks Amin uh, How are you Ender? Yeah, right. uh, um, I saw a couple of weeks ago you were at Daily Mount Park and you ended up sitting beside Stephen Kenny for the game like was that the whole 90 minutes or what were you chatting about or what was it like? No, um, I obviously just went from good friends with Wardy, so uh, I went up to watch him play. It was the beginning against the dock, so uh, just as I was walking in, I seen him. Um, he was sat in the middle and I just sat up the back and then at half time just came up for a chat and was just having a chat with me and see how things were and, and that was it really. Had you met him personally before that? Yeah, I've met him a few times. I've obviously met him at, the, at a couple of PFAI awards over the years um, and obviously played against him a few times. So I would have had a few chats with him, yeah. yeah. Actually, just before you signed for Pats, did he try to take you to Derry? I think like it probably would have been an era where he'd be looking for a player like you back then. Um, no, I don't think so. I think he might have had Danny Lafferty there uh, then, so I don't think so. No, I think he was a year after, actually. There was a year's gap there. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, hi, and uh, first crack. Um, has Stephen talked to you much about what he's expecting tactically from you or from the left back? Um, he's spoken a lot what tactically what he wants from us. Um, not so much individually, but obviously he's covering every every position when we're looking at it. And we have only had probably we had one meeting yesterday about it, so. Uh, what we looked at yesterday, we, we went on the training pitch today and everything was good, everything was positive. You can see the lads are listening and are working hard on trying to obviously rectify all his decisions, all his ideas on the pitch. Mm. Is there anything notably different about training this morning as to how it was done last year? Um, yeah, there's been a few. Obviously, he's coming in with his ideas and his, his training. Like the, the management team, they have their own way of doing things. And, it was only one training session today, but we were obviously working on a lot tactically um, what we want to do with the, with the whole shape of the team. So, yeah, it's, it's been a bit different, yeah. Yeah. And what are your early impressions of, of Coach Damien Duff? I've heard he's a, a fairly hard taskmaster at times. Oh, yeah. To be fair, I didn't see much of him today. I think he's, he's done a lot with the attackers today, so um, I didn't get to see too much of him today. Yeah. But I, I think everyone knows the uh, things about yeah, um, my last question is not to set you up for a future career in punditry, but do you give Shamrock Rovers much of a chance against Milan? Yeah, I think there's always a chance, especially in a one-off game. Um, I think they play, they play, they play a nice way of football. Like where I think they can cause a lot of problems to race in Milan. I think they'd be, in, they'd be a bit surprised, and hopefully they can, they can make a game of it. Mm. Thanks, a million. Cheers. Final question: Anthony Point from Watson. Hi, Enda. How are you? Uh, I know you're talking about you're not able to, you can't really rest on your laurels, but when Stephen came in, he described uh, back four yourself, John, uh, Shane Duffy, and Matt as potentially one of the, the top 10 international back fours in Europe. So, I mean, that's how you talk. It's hard not to get excited when you hear something like that. Oh, no, definitely, yeah. It's obviously a big compliment, but it, it comes down to the players having to, to produce that level of performance consistently to, to be that or to, to maintain that. And uh, that's why you can't really rest on your laurels. You, you can't really take your foot off the pedal. You know, for the likes of yourself and Matt, you're very experienced players, but you've kind of found yourself to be part of this the very much modern fullbacks. Have you sensed that there's a change in the perception of fullbacks in the Premier League in the last sort of three, four years in particular? And, and why do you think that might be the case? Um, I just think a lot are more kind of used as an attacking outlet nowadays and there's a lot more freedom to kind of go and express yourself further up the pitch. I think if you look at Matt's stats, I think the stats are crazy for like so many players as a wing back. He 
he scored a lot of goals, he's got a lot of assists over the last two seasons and it's something that I want to do, I want to add to the game and I want to do a lot more of it. I scored a few goals in that. But, um, I think obviously Matt's been excellent as a wing back over the last two years. And it's just something, it's an new dimension for, for teams the way they play and it's, it's just a positive one for us. Thank you very much. That's for the last thing. Thank you very much to everybody who asked the question. We will, of course, share the video with you afterwards. And thank you for your time. And we'll share that. There is an embargo as we will repeat that a little bit later on. So thanks, everyone, for your time. And we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thanks, Ash. Thanks, Ender.